Hello everyone, praise good here, and welcome back to Let's Play Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torments. Our quest has begun, and we have just started our journey to recruit the Order of No Quarter. Now today, today might be a little bit longer episode, because we're going to explore the Tower of Fate, or our home quarters. So welcome to the Tower of Fate. There are several skulls that you can obtain within this tower. And this thing here, it's not just a little puppet. Uh, we will be using this creature in no, in short time. But first thing I want to talk about is this character here. Missy. If you ever miss any wisp chests, I can summon the contents here. But, you know, supplies, any gold. And it isn't cheap to summon a wisp, but whether it be for will or for darkness. I've got nothing to sell for you. So, oh, I did not read this. I sped through this. Darkness was far in Clockwork Tower, Explodatorium, and the Lich Yard. Any other new place you'll find. A, a Willful Wisp. Okay, so Clock Tower, Explodatorium, and Lich Yard. Which I'm going to be playing... Which I'm going to talk about the whole level selection thing in later on or towards uh, later on this episode or some other point. But... Something I want to make note here is if you've played Shovel Knight and haven't played Spectre of Torment yet, or if you, or for the reason you've seen it and haven't seen Spectre of Torment, I'm going to say pay attention to the characters you see and actually take guess, take a guess at where they end up towards the end of this game. Because reminder, it's a prequel. Anyway, let's continue to explore the tower. So as you go through the uh, tower and complete it, you will scavenging for customers. So as you go along, you will be recruiting the, the Order of No Quarter. So more than just this person will be here. But this character, this character was added into the Nintendo Nintendo versions of the game. And it's a special character, well I think actually the home console Nintendo versions. She basically makes it, it, makes it possible for you to summon a, a player two while in a level or in this level so it's probably about as close you'll get it to drop and drop out in between levels now this guy here so I slice it through the planes there wow juice on me a good liquor on him mainly but even though it will be minuscule make sure you talk to this guy every time you come back because he'll give you at least one coin but the first time you come here he'll give you many coins now in your in the Tower of Fate there are I believe there are three total red skulls. We saw one earlier below the basically the mirror entity of this guy. Here's another one. And also make note of that, but we're gonna look at that in a second. This mirror here, if you hit it enough times, this summons the witch, which is the one that keeps track of all your stats, so. Yeah, you can always come back here and talk to her if you need to. Now this, this small lovely, lovely creature, will give you some rewards if you can do something for it. Shake this pile of baubles, wait for it to get here, now pretty much stand on top of it and boop! And you've done the hardest part. Go ahead and give this, get this over here to this guy, and then play with him for a little bit. He's a little friend though. Now oddly enough, this little guy is going to for, oop, is going to foreshadow about an enemy we'll see later on in the game. And after that, that's it. And then let him play a little bit. Well, isn't that several degrees of adorable? Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I almost got to do the one thing I showed. So, something you're going to need to do throughout this, and this is just a little Easter egg. I don't think it even gives you an achievement, but hit this particular lamp enough so it breaks and lands on this knight, and then he'll upgrade. Basically, the gold armors from before, I forget, I sorry I didn't show his dialogue, but. Basically, you will be slowly upgrading this particular gold armor as, throughout your journey, but only once per visit back to the Tower of Fate. At least I'm pretty sure. Yep, one per, once per visit. Anyway, so another area in the Tower of Fate is just up here above the dining hall. Now, I blew open the stairway to get here earlier. I blew open the stairway to get here earlier, so you can get here right from the beginning. 
Now there'll be another NPC that shows up here later on as you go on that teach you something cool that I'm going to show you here. But basic, but here's your here's your third skull, and he uses a little tutorial upon rails. Rails, you can push forward to go faster, pull back to slow down. But if you're going along and then you press down off a jump, or you press up off a jump, you skateboard, dude. Yeah, dude, gnarly. Hello. I'm the edge farmer. So, he'll give you something once we get a little bit later on. Now, something else that we're going to do here today, probably the last major thing we'll do within the Tower of Fate today, is we're going to do a challenge. Now, I will. S now this may take me a while to complete, because this is a little bit harder, but it is doable even in your just starting the game form. But this challenge, all it, get, all it will net you is money. Welcome. Few visit the endless parapets, but the brave I offer a brief diversion of my own design. As if the enchantress has the time for diversions. I've been here far too long. I've been here far longer than she, and I mainly reward the odd seeker of thrills, and none harm me. Care to play my game? If you fare well, there may be a reward. Sure. Please board the platform. Board the platforms! And that's precisely what you're doing. Might be quiet while I concentrate, but basically, welcome to a challenge mode. Using your skills that you have obtained, you are climbing this tower, and you are basically being chased by Horus the whole way up. I messed that up horribly. It doesn't cost you anything, but it doesn't cost you anything, and you get some minor deposits of money along the way, and it also randomly generates every time you go up it. And I'll show you the clear like point where it's like, okay, well, here's where it's going to generate. Right here. So if you hit these clear divides right here, this is where it's going to start generating. Now anyway, these uh, these pink rugs, or these pink, uh, I don't know what the, I, I can only think of rugs as the word. Those pink rugs, in this, in this world, this is, or in this type of level, this architect level I should say, that is your only indicator that you cannot climb this wall. Anyway. Anyway, if Horse catches up to you on his trolley, that's it, game over, you lose the challenge. So it might be better to cut your losses and just press forward without money, or even killing an enemy. Because you get far more money for completing it than just by killing enemies or taking risky jumps. Excuse me, coming through. Now then, there are a couple layouts of this of this map that do trip me up every now and again kinda like here but keep your cool cuz even though Horus is chasing you even though Horus is chasing you up you just wanna make sure you're keeping a level ahead cuz I don't cuz until a certain point he's only gonna be going as fast as you are and then once you can see him he will slowly catch up beyond that Oh, I want to go this way. Actually, this is new. Kind of new. Oh, I, I haven't gone this way. That's why it's new. Oop, and I'm dead. <laughs> okay. At this point, you kind of get the idea. I'll uh, cut until I get my successful run in, and then I'll meet you at the top of the tower, so to say.
And there we go. Just simply jump your way up, don't be a fool, and you win. Whew. Now, that's going to be kind of... A, a lot of that is going to be kind of a... <laughs> damn it, horse. A lot of that stuff is going to be kind of weird to do, especially if you haven't played through the game first, to learn the mechanics, because this is just going to kind of throw you and say, okay, you know how everything works. Shut the hell up and do it. <laughs> I'm impressed. You have bested my challenge. Well done. And that's Allergia Monari. I can't see how much because I have a big red record button over what my money would be. But that is now everything... I believe that is almost everything you can do within the Tower of Fate up to this point. Now we're going to get to things that we will do after every level. And I'll do them out of order for now. So first... Marked with a cloak. So these creatures are gathering around a vessel marked with a cloak. Perhaps I'll make an offering. So basically... I hope that's not showing up. Anyway. So anyway. You basically want to make three offer, three or four offerings of 800 gold. And... It's different for every one of these, by the way. So after three... The creatures will accept your gold offering... And form a... Odd creature. State your business, abomination. Who are you? We are many. We like your gold. We like your cloak. Touch it. New powers. Yes, we cloak you in darkness. Welcome to your welcome to your armor sets for the game. A little more expensive than other games, than the other games, oddly enough. But I will just warn you: we're probably going to be using this this uh, cloak once we get enough money for it, but right now we're going to ignore it. I just want to get access to everything and then we'll start going through the tower of power like we normally would. So, hoopla! So, it's the same thing here. So, anyway. This this one will cost you 3,000 gold. Which, you have gotten close to that much money just doing what you've done in the in the first level and the challenge if you took if you took it on. We be legion. Curious, no curious. Oh. Get curious, return. So those are your... Those, the one guy is your armor power-up. The other guy is a sub-weapon power-up. Which the sub-weapons are here. My beloved, be my betrothed, my heart breaks. For her red skull lies misplaced. Oh, to see her crimson face once more. If you should happen upon a red skull, even a hundred of them, I, then I beg you, please bring them all to me. In the past life, I hunted curios, but I trade them all away just to see my love again. Surely these would interest you? So he gives you the access to curios. And we have access to... If you, just, if you did not get any of the red skulls within the Tower of Fate, you have access to two of these. We still have access to two. Yes, yeah, so two of these, but instead of the two being the Will Skull and the Throwing Sickle, you get the Throwing Sickle and the dead ta the Dread Talon. The Dread Talon, and I'm gonna, not going to lie, I haven't used it that much. Anyway. Ah, this cutie was well guarded. Well, I can lead you there. You'll have to battle your way out. So, welcome to the Curio Staging Grounds. You haven't seen that a curse has been placed here. I'm afraid your sight will be of no use. Why is that, you ask? Sorry, but that's an ancient skeleton secret. We'll regroup ahead. Tread carefully. So the game is basically informing you. There we go. It's informing you, or basically if you pay attention to your to your surroundings, you will see that you have access to your slow weapon, the will skull. Clutch the skull to gain will. Well, if you pay attention to your will up there at the top, you have no will. Me getting hit will kill you. So just use this twice and you should be golden. Even though if you're good about it, you can just skate right through. Although I always get hit. I think they have it designed just perfectly so you always get hit. Hello. Excellent. Oh, here we go. And we're right back here at the Tower of Fate. Use, the, use it wisely. So. Not only do I wish to get that, I want to get, the, get this particular curio or bobble. This is actually by far one of my favorite curios. And this is probably the one I've used the most in the game. The Throwing Sickle. When powered up, it becomes 
a an, an extremely useful tool. Um, go away. I only wanted the money. So basically, these well, these particular rooms are basically a hey here. Here's the tutorial for how to use your weapon. Let's make sure you know how to use it before you go leaping blindly into battle in a few minutes. Now, don't worry. These curio, these curio places, they will never hide a red skull in here. Anyway, let's see. Now, how much money do we have? I think I'm actually going to... I'm going to skip the armor, even though I like the armor that you can get here. I'm actually going to go ahead and... Okay, that's still broken. I'm going to actually go ahead and upgrade... The sickle right away. Oh, I couldn't even afford the armor I like anyway. So now the, the sickle will pass through obstacles and barriers and also grab money if we fall in battle. We'll need that. Anyway, now we're here, finally here, finally, finally here at the mirror, where I will end off today's video. Next time on Let's Play Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment, we will be heading to the first of many levels. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.